This is a scientific detective story in which a biologist discovers a disturbing new source of environmental danger. The evidence of species uh, that contaminate agriculture products that can kill humans has been the decisive evidence for the quarantine and inspection service finally to get their act together. Dr. Gustav Halligraf is a Dutch-born marine biologist working for CSIRO's Division of Fisheries based in Hobart. Here he is taking samples of phytoplankton, the tiny microscopic plants which float in seawater. These are among the first living organisms to evolve on our planet more than 400 million years ago. These are the organisms that produce the oxygen in the atmosphere that we breathe today. These are the organisms that contributed significantly to the oil reserves that some of us use to drive our cars to work. They're single-celled organisms, and when you look at them under an electron microscope, you're overwhelmed by their beautiful patterns of geometry. They're, they have horns, wings, all the structures that humans saw they invented, like the wheel, the plankton already invented more than 400 million years ago. One group of phytoplankton, called dinoflagellates, forms long chains. A few of these species are the villains of our story. They produce potent neurotoxins, which can cause paralysis and death in human beings. It's called PSP, or paralytic shellfish poisoning. For shellfish farmers, Gustav's research has very practical implications. Mussels, oysters and scallops eat the dinoflagellates and concentrate the poison in their bodies. They are immune, but the toxin can kill birds, seals, whales and humans. Until recently, these shellfish were free of the toxic plankton. It had never been found in Australian waters. Here, a fresh mussel has always been a safe mussel. But in 1986, Dr. Halligraf dropped his net into the Derwent estuary and changed the shellfish industry forever. I just had been transferred from Sydney to Hobart and my very first plankton sample that I collected outside these laboratories in the Durant River contained a bloom of this toxic dinoflagellate. I knew my literature and I knew that this organism had killed children in Mexico. Dr. Halligraf immediately notified the Tasmanian Department of Sea Fisheries. Evidence ...for the presence of a toxic dinoflagellate species in the Durant River and this organism has the potential to contaminate commercial shellfish farms in the Dantocasta Channel and the Yuan River. The department set up a monitoring system to check the oysters for contamination. It turns out they were only just in time. That summer, the first toxic concentrations appeared. A dozen oyster and mussel farms were closed for several months. By winter, the toxins had disappeared and the bans were lifted. Since then, Contamination alerts have become an essential fact of life. The monitoring program is economically very important. It guarantees purity for the lucrative international market. We really can get into almost any country in the world with our shellfish sanitation program. So that opens, opens the world for us. We can sell our shellfish really almost anywhere. Dr Halligraf was left with a question. Where did the dinoflagellates come from? He sampled the sediment in the estuary and found no evidence of toxic phytoplankton in the past. He suspected they'd been brought in accidentally by large ships, mostly Japanese wood chip vessels. These ships come to Australia empty. For stability, they are loaded with thousands of tons of ballast. They use seawater, which usually comes from heavily polluted coastal areas. Every year, 60 million tons of imported water is dumped around Australia. Mud samples taken from the bottom of the ballast tanks of visiting cargo vessels provided conclusive proof to Gustav and his colleagues. Nestled in the mud were thousands of dinoflagellate spores, the tough resting state which is rather like a seed. These spore stages are extremely resistant and it can be sleeping in these sediments for 10, 20 years and when the conditions are suitable they germinate and produce new toxic Dinoflagellate blooms in the water column. And we found these species now in the ports of Hobart, Adelaide and Melbourne. 
The shellfish industry all around Australia is vulnerable to many other creatures hitchhiking in ballast tanks. Our marine agriculture is now protected by voluntary quarantine guidelines. These guidelines include, for example, ships coming to Australian ports are being asked to exchange and clean out their ballast tanks uh, in the open ocean, far away from Australian waters. And under no condition should any discharge of ballast water uh, be permitted in sensitive agriculture areas. Dr. Hallegraaff has conclusively proved that ballast seawater is a dangerous carrier of marine pests. There are many more organisms which could travel the same international route. Now that the alert has been sounded, the Australian system will probably be adopted by governments around the world. <laughs>